Good morning. Welcome to this morning's service. We, we have a new mic, and we're going to try it and see if it makes any difference. So if there's, if there's anybody that's having trouble do this or stand up or wave at me or whatever, because right now Julie is kind of trying to adjust me. Welcome to Peace United Methodist Church. I am Pastor Freddie, and this is All Saints Sunday that we as we're celebrating today. Um, I'm going to give you an announcement right off the bat so I don't forget to do it. Uh, recording World Bank Offering. It's on the, the table in the back and on the next to she says it's by the strip table, but it's not. It's right out there. Um, there are, oh, by the strip table, there are boxes for those who plan to follow the World Bank Offering calendar. The calendar is on the November newsletter, and there are newsletters available on the same table if you are unable to print one from your computer. And when complete, you can bring your contribution place in the offering plate at any time. I know if I didn't announce that right now, I would forget to do it because my memory is very, very good. Let us all stand now as we sing for all the saints. We're going to sing verses 1, 4, and 6. Salvation, 
and you give us everything we need for fruitful living. Now we have come to this house of thanksgiving to praise and to your holy name and to sing our songs of the thanksgiving. By the grace of baptism, you have adopted us as your children. You have made us ours to be your eternal life and incorporated us into your family, which we call the church. We know the good news of how Christ offers to bear the sins of the world, and you have entrusted us with the mission to spread the word throughout the world. Answer us, O oh merciful God, for your prayers are joined with the one who stands in heaven. Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I think this is where I call you. Today we are going to remember with gratitude and love the people who have died and entered life eternal as we celebrate our All Saints observance. First I'm going to read off the names and if you have other names that you would like to, to add, um, I will be walking up and down because we can't pass the mic and I'll explain that later. And I will repeat the name, and Julie's going to light the candle for you. When you come up for communion later, if you remember somebody or you have someone on your heart, feel free to light a candle on your own. In memory of Edwin Duncan, Darlene Tonin, Don, Don Fredrickson, Rita Woods, Randy and Pat Lansky, Nancy, Nancy Peroni, Clara Bastion, David L. Porter Sr., Dan and Victoria and Gotti. Norman and Doris Dreyer, Anthony and Gotti, Stephen Norman, Paul Rasmussen, Norma and Louis Berman. We do have lots of candles, by the way. Are there others that you would like to have lifted? Yes. Henry Van Schindel and Brian Heidi. Debbie Van Schindel and Brian Heidi. 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 Alan Harrison. Alan Harrison. Alan Harrison. 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 I know that. The rest of the candles are up there. Julie Sieber. Lindora Mack. Lindora Cooper. Lindora Mack. Barbara Cooper. And Thomas Richard Cooper. And Thomas Richard Cooper. To lift up my parents, Margaret, no, Fox, Harry's parents, 
Ewan and Harold heard me. And I'd also like to draw your attention to the big candle up on the altar. That candle is a representative of all of the veterans who have given their all. I know Veterans Day is coming up. We're going to celebrate it better next week. But I wanted to make sure we didn't forget the veterans today. And that's where the big one is from up there. We also have some memorial gifts that we need to be grateful for from Edwin, Edwin Duncan, from Donald Green, and from Rita Woods. And Rita is designated for our youth group. May we get one soon. Join me now as we dedicate these gifts. We present this, these memorials to be dedicated to the glory of Almighty God and for service in this church in loving memory of those that we have made. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, we dedicate the memorials to the glory of God, and in memory of these servants, the memories of, righteous, of righteousness is ever blessed. We want to do glory to his name. Let us worship the Lord and Please join me in the prayer of dedication. of the faithful service of thy servants. May we consecrate our lives to your service and be joined with the faithful saints in building up the holy temple of the Lord. Amen. Thank you for putting up with me as I do this, this time. Maybe by, by next year I'll actually know how to do it right. Thank you, Julie. Hmm. I guess that right now, I lost my day. There we go. It is a time for young disciples. Would the young disciples like to come forward? I know there aren't many today, but you're still very important. Well, they're still alive. 
because they're really still bringing you to church. And that's important. But the most important thing that you need to remember is that every one of us has had somebody who brought us to the church so that we would know who God is. My mom was like that for me. My mom never missed a day when she did read her Bible. I used to think it was so silly because she read it all the time, every night before she went to bed. And I'd come in sometimes from school, and she'd be sitting there reading the Bible. Beth knew maybe it was a bad day or something. Not really, we should But mom also believed in prayer, and prayer that God would be there with us always, and that God would be there for each of us always, too. That's so important for us to remember that. You are God's gift. And we're so grateful that you are here. Can we pray? Dear God, thank you for being there for us. And thank you for keeping us safe. And guide us in the coming week. Guide us in the coming week. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you for coming up. Oh, I love the pictures of the dogs that she, she refines for us. I really, really do. So anyone come up for the next The first reading today is from Revelations chapter 21, verses 1 through 6a. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among the mortals. He will dwell with them, they will be his peoples, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe out every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more. For the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Also he said, Write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give water as a gift from the spring of the water of life. The second reading is from the Gospel of John, chapter 11, verses 32 through 44. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been there, then here my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, See how he loved him? But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind men have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again, greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench, because he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. 
The dead man came out with his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Now I'm going to do something just a little bit different here because I wasn't sure that the new mic was going to be here today as mic isn't feeling so well. But, so I had planned to stay right here at the pulpit and I may still do that. Our readings this morning are readings that we have often hear when we are doing funerals and, and that sort of thing. But especially the gospel reading I want to draw your attention to, it's a good example of how we can learn from scripture. Truly it's counter-cultural and it turns the me first attitude of the present age on its head. Let's take a look at this for just a minute, but first a, a little bit of background. Bethany it's a very small village, about two miles from Jerusalem. It's a place where Jesus found a safe ref refuge. It's the place where Simon the leper lived. It's the home of three of Jesus' closest friends, Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. The village may justifiably be called the Judean home of Jesus as he appears to him performed, preferred to lodge there, to stay there. That's where he felt comfortable. It was a place where, where he could find some real friends, friends with whom he could let down his hair. It's a place where few of his conversations were recorded. It was a place in Bethany where there was no Pharisee trying to trip him up. No one came to him asking for healing. In fact, Bethany was the place where Jesus went to just relax. You see, every man of God needs a Bethany that they can go to. Even Messiahs need friends, you see. And the truth is that many of your pastors and leaders today, they're starving for this kind of friendship. But in, back to the scripture. Now Lazarus had become very ill, and his faithful sisters had sent for Jesus. But Jesus was delayed in coming. In fact, he himself waited before he came. But by the time, so by the time when Jesus arrived, Lazarus had been dead for. And we see a glimpse of the love that he had, that Jesus had for those who walked with him upon this earth. Now, as he's coming into town, he's met by Lazarus', Lazarus sister. And she's not too happy with him, folks. If you had been here, she says, my brother would not have died. Where have you been? Now, even though Bethany was usually a place where Jesus could go and let his hair down. This day when Lazarus had passed was not such a day for him, for there was all sorts of people that were mumbling. If, you know, like we do when we're an armchair uh, quarterback and we can tell everybody how to do things right. Well, that's what they were doing. They were saying, he'd been here. He did all those miracles. He did all that stuff. Couldn't he have saved his best friend? If it had been me, I'd done it then. If that's the way English is. I can just hear them, and I can see them, and I can see the side glances. But Jesus doesn't seem to even figure them any mind. He, instead he says, take me to the tomb and roll the stone away. Now Martha, the other sister of Lazarus, wants, um, 
You might not want to do that, Jesus, because by now, after four days, surely he stinks. I love it in the, the uh, King James Version. It says, he stinketh. But Jesus says, basically, watch what I'm going to do and see what happens. Now, first off, he, he prays a prayer of thanks to God, the Father in heaven. And then he calls out to Lazarus, come out. And Lazarus comes up. He comes out wrapped in the paws that they had wrapped him in so that they could put all of the spices on him. Those paws that he was buried in. I can't help but wonder how we would feel if we just were to be there and to see Lazarus come out of that tomb, come out with the claws still hanging around him, maybe a, a wrap around his head. My bet is that Lazarus' life was changed briefly after that. And if we saw it, I bet you our lives would be changed just a tad bit too, wouldn't we? You know, it's often difficult when the whole world seems to be talking badly about us or pointing fingers or accusing us of doing things that they think we shouldn't be doing. But Jesus' example is to pay them no never mind, as they say, but to stay on the path that God has put before us. Throughout all of his teachings, Christ challenged the disciples as they walked with him. And he is now challenging us. He's throwing down a gauntlet, if you will, to guide us onto the road of our own personal safety. Listen to what he's telling us to do, folks. He says, stand up for what is right. Hmm. Walk the walk, talk the talk. He says, don't sink to their level. The world's always going to be out there doing things that probably aren't what we would like to do. Don't let them steer you off the path that God is guiding you on. Pray for those who abuse you. Really, God? You want me to pray for those who abuse me? Okay. He says, if you get smacked on one cheek, earn the other. Lose your coat? Throw your shirt in as well. Give cheerfully and, and extravagantly. And don't expect to get anything. Now, if we were to look at the lives that some of the saints celebrated by our church, by those who passed before us, we no doubt find some, but not all of these qualities in their lives. But it's not an easy challenge, folks. It's not easy, and it's not meant to be. Because if we are to live the life of faithfulness to God, that God requires of us. We find that it is very difficult. For people will look at us, if they will talk bad about us, they'll do the things that we don't want them to do and look down on us. <clears throat> You know how I know that? Because they did that to Jesus. They did that to our Savior. So why wouldn't they do it to us, those who stand up for Jesus? Celebrating our ancestors, our sisters and our brothers in the faith, some that we know, others that we don't know, some that we esteem and others that we revile. But all of them lived and died furthering the Christian faith. We've come to realize that God is calling us to say to us too. I thought I'd let you know a little bit about what All Saints Day actually is. It actually, it dates back to 1609 or 1610 AD when Pope Boniface consecrated the Pantheon of Rome. Can't be wrong, right? To the Blessed Virgin and all martyrs. And this feast, which accompanied 
that dedication is continued yet to today. But it was in the 8th century that All Saints was moved to November 1st, and it was moved by Pope Gregory II, when he dedicated an oratory in St. Peter's for the relics of the holy apostles, apostles and all saints, martyrs, confessors, of all that had been made perfect and who are rescued from the world. Okay, that's some interesting information that I found. But like I always say, so what? You see, All Saints Day is when we remember and pay tribute to those countless men and women who recognize in their steadfastness to our lives and to our faith. But this in itself can cause some problems, can it? as I was telling the kids. Because all sorts of images come to us when we think of saints. Now, when I was younger, I thought of saints as being spiritual giants. You know, the ones that never did anything wrong. They were always good and pure. But as I got older, I came to realize that saints are just people like you and me with faults and foibles and things that make us somewhat less saintly. For instance, one of my, the saints that I have always been inspired by was St. Francis of Assisi. However, as I read about him and I studied him, well, I must admit I was a little bit shocked. You see, in his younger days, he was a rich, idle brat. He enjoyed war and its spoils. He enjoyed hurting others. But after being captured, imprisoned, and disgraced, God took hold of his life. And he repented of his ways and became a humble, Christ-centered man who was a gentle example of the other faith. After he turned over his life to God, we see a very different man. For St. Francis, he cared about the church, he cared about the poor, he cared about all of the things that we care about today. And God told him to go and repair my church, which is failing. It's falling down to do something about it. Kind of where we're at today, isn't it? Our church needs another St. Francis. Not our church has in peace, but our, the greater church. Later, St. Francis was the one who, who established the St. Fran Franciscan Order. And they're still active today in a lot of our hospitals, especially in Green Bay. You see, St. Francis has and continues to be an inspiration to countless people throughout the centuries but his beginnings wouldn't have inspired anyone. Isn't it interesting how our own rose-colored glasses can blur the truth that's right there in front of us? I would imagine, as I look out today, that none of us here, myself included, would think of ourselves as a saintly potential in that manner. But we need to move away from that kind of restrictive because we must ask ourselves this question. Are we open enough to God to be saints ourselves? An intriguing question, isn't it? You see, sainthood is not about sinlessness. As I said to the kids, the only one that could be sinless was Christ. And I don't think I fit into that category, that's for sure. And I probably would think that no one else does either. But saintliness is wholly about our openness to God. As St. Francis wasn't perfect, he wasn't even very good to begin with, was he? But he was a human being, flesh and blood, and subject to all sorts of temptations, just like we are. He was a man who became open to God and through this experienced the grace of God in 
and upon his life. He's just one example of why we celebrate All Saints Day. Because through the millennia, there have been and continue to be men and women who have been open to God. And through that openness, have touched the lives of others. We give thanks for the way they enrich our lives through their actions and the instructions that they receive from the Holy Scripture. So today as we celebrate the saints, as we take communion and remember them, we need to let them inspire us to embody all that Jesus Christ teaches us about the kingdom of God. Let the day be a day which motivates us to follow in the path of the saints that have and continue to inspire us. But we also need to remember that the saints learned from Jesus' teaching just as we do today through the scripture. You see, Christ was so determined to instruct us that he died on the cross to remind us all that we are valued in the kingdom. We then receive the spirit of the Holy Spirit into our lives for a reason. And that reason is that, that God wants each of us to strive to be saints, to have an impact on others' lives, and to leave a legacy which will inspire the generations that follow us. We don't follow this path for earthly rewards, to receive the commendation of our peers. We do all of this. Everything that we do as we hit, go on, as John Wesley said, on to perfection. None of us are perfect. We do this all to the glory of God. Just as the countless saints who have gone before us, those that we celebrate today, and those who have touched our lives. Let us Follow their footsteps to be saints as we open ourselves to God and step out into the love of the world so that we can teach them who God is for us. Amen. Please stand now as we sing Holy Ground. We're going to sing this twice through.
came to the altar barefoot. <laughs> and we sang that song that we are standing on holy ground. Because truly we are when the saints of God come into our lives. We are standing on holy ground. Today as we celebrate communion, I invite all of you to come forward for you don't have to be a member of this church or any church to take part in our communion together. We call this the open table, the table that invites all in. Let us not forget that for all our welcome. and also as we take the name the remembrance of peace. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. And we have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. And we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Forgive us for joyful obedience to Jesus Christ. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. And that proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. All is done. Amen. Let us now offer one another the signs of reconciliation and love. And I would recommend that you do it by either a wave, a nod, or a smile today. And always know that God does love you. And we can move on to the next slide, please. And again. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give our thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, O Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For you formed us in your image and you breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity you made covenant to be our sovereign God, and you spoke to us through the prophets. And so with your people at earth and all of the company of heaven, we praise your name and join you here on your name here. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ, for your spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, he fed the hungry, and he ate with sinners. And by the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church and delivered us from slavery to sin and death. 
And you made with us a new covenant of water in the Spirit. And when Jesus Christ comes, when the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word and Holy Spirit. Now on the night which he gave himself up for us, and he was there with all of his friends, he gave thanks to you, Father, as he gave thanks for all things. And he broke the bread. And he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup. And he gave thanks to you, dear Father. And he gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant. Pour it out for you and for the many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine, bread and cup and bowls. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world, the body of Christ redeemed by this blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all of the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet through your son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your holy church, all honor and glory are yours. Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now with the confidence of God's children, pray with me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Julia, I'd like to ask you to come up and help. Because there is one more, we are poor many of one body. For we all partake of the one more, in this case, we don't, we're still using the cup. And that bread that we that we bread is sharing in the body of Christ. In the cup over which we give thanks, we are sharing in the blood of Christ. The body of Christ is given to you. And the blood of Christ is given to you. Amen. Amen. As you come forward, Julie will, will give you the communion and I'll turn on candles and as you would like to put yourself if there's some more that you would like to ask. Please come forward. Eternal God, we give thanks for this holy spirit, which you have given to us. Grant that we may go into the world and the strength of your spirit to give ourselves our power and the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Amen.
sheets of suddenly become entangled. That's camp down here. Um, some of you saw my husband lean in and ask for one more candle to be lit. That candle was my grandson. Yes. Oh. Sorry, thank you. I forget to do that. That candle was for my grandson who was killed in a motorcycle accident a few years ago. But this young man was a man, a young man who really and truly believed in God. In fact, he had his favorite scripture was tattooed on his body. It started here and it went down and on his back. And when the first responders got to him and they saw the tattoo, they said, they all took their hands because they knew there was nothing more they could do for him. They took hands and they prayed over him because they knew how much God meant to him. Even at that young age, I share that. It comes down to that time when we share our joys and concerns. And now I'll to explain to you a little bit. COVID has hit our midst. We must remember Mary Trittine, as she uh, tested positive this last week, along with uh, having some other health issues, and she has been in and out of the hospital. They've given, him, given her IV antibiotics, and also um, have given her extra fluids because she can't so dehydrated. We must keep her in our prayers. Along with that, we need to keep Deb, Deb Schultz, who also tested positive on Tuesday, and Mike, who was coming, starting to feel sick yesterday and is being tested today, and they're pretty sure he's got COVID as well. For Sarah and Emma, Dart, is it? Yes. Okay. They also have tested positive for COVID. That nasty little thing has hit our church. And we need to keep vigilant and keep our prayers for all of those who are dealing with COVID at this time. Are there others that you would like to lift up? Yes, Pat. I would like prayers for a classmate of mine, her family, who has multiple medical issues. Probably six people in her family are either autoimmune or have cancer. So if you could keep Anne's family in our prayers, I'd appreciate it. Anne's, Anne's family. Also, um, a friend of my daughter, her name is Felicia. She was just um, diagnosed with breast cancer that has metastasized, and she's 40 years old. For Felicia, who has been diagnosed with breast cancer and it is, has metastasized to other areas of her body. I'm not seeing any other hands, so let us pray. Lord God, we come before you with a lot of concerns today. Some listed and some not. But Lord, we also come to you knowing that with you all things are possible. That you are the healer, the one who brings us to all health again. We lift those who are dealing with COVID. We lift those in Anne's family who are autoimmune, and we pray that they don't come in contact with this awful virus. 
We lift you, Felicia, who has been diagnosed with breast cancer, that's metastasized, Lord. And we pray that they will find the treatment for her that will help her. Lord God, there are so many things that are in our hearts today, Lord. Help us to know that you are here too. We ask this in your precious name. Amen. Now we have blessing of peace twice today, and that's not exactly what we're going to do, because I forgot to have Sheila take that one out. So let us say, say it as we say, I sing a song of the saints of God, verses 1 and 3. Please sing it.